Great. So one of the advantage of using distributed architecture of this type in Quakes is that it's much simpler to join different teams that are using a different languages and different frameworks. So what is quite common is that you have a platform teams, application uh, uh, engineering team, and a data teams. They use different languages. Some of them are using Java, some of them are using Python, and then uh, different companies come with a different ways how to kind of surface this uh, border between those two teams. The ones that um, asking data teams to handle Python code that's then rewrited to Java is one of the less ideal examples. Um, and of course, today I'm going to show you something hopefully a bit better. So because what, um, what we have mentioned today already, um, here we can deploy any service that is Dockerized. As a result, we can have a team that's using Java to um, process data using uh, libraries like Kafka Streams. And then we can have a data team that use Python to mm, intercept this data with a Python ecosystem, uh, ML, AI, LLMs, etc. And that interface is as smooth as it gets. It's just a topic here. So I have a template here prepared. I'm going to show you now how easy it is to basically deploy a new microservice, which this time will not use Python and Quick Streams, but use Kafka Streams. And um, how you can also integrate that with a traditional Java uh, monitoring stack. So we're going to have here a um, JMX exposed to a Prometheus endpoint collected by Prometheus collector and then exposed in a Grafana dashboard um, and all wired up in this template. So I'm starting by forking this template um, called IoT from the MOK stream. It has everything prepared to do what I'm going to do now. So I don't have to wire it up uh, manually. So here you can fork it by yourself and then you can basically replicate what I'll show you today. So here I have a production which has no Kafka stream microservice in it on purpose. And I'm going to create a new dev environment where I'm going to edit with you. So I'm going to go here, create a new environment. I'm going to call it Clubhouse. And I'm going to create a new branch Clubhouse as well. Now this will give me exact copy of a production of this project, which I'm free to, to modify. Okay, I'm gonna use Confluent Curve Broker. So here I have an empty cluster and I'm gonna create an API key to connect this environment to this Confluent Broker. So just gonna follow the readme on the right. <clears throat> so what basically I'm doing here is I'm connecting Quick's environment to a Confluent Cloud Broker. So Quix would orchestrate changes in that broker for me. So I don't have to really learn Confluent, Red Panda, Avon, Upstash, or Stream Native. It will do the job for me. And I just use this one simplifier uh, interface. So let's create an environment. And now this will create an exact copy of um, cloud environment for me, this time just for my development purposes. And of course, because I create a new branch for main, it will have exact same data. Great. <clears throat> So now the YAML in the main branch is being deployed into this environment. And you can see I'm getting here a pipeline and a couple of auxiliary services that will help me to develop and observe the results. So for equally as the previous demo, I have here um, a Flask web gateway, which you're gonna get the data from a data source. And then I have a 
pipeline here processing this data. Now, data source today is an app called Sensilogger. It's available on iOS and Apple uh, and um, Android. And what it does is just send data into um, a predefined endpoint. And I just configure it to send it to mine. So as you can see here, it's getting green. And that's because it's sending data into the pipeline. So here we say seeing a messages coming in. Great. So um, now this is getting data in, processing data out, and now it's whole thing getting green. We can also start a crash detection service. Now, as a result, um, we have here a front-end microservice, which uh, will now visualize this data, like the location where I am. So I'm now in the Prague in Central Europe. And if I take this into hand, it will go up and down. Great, so that is working. But what if I want to do something with this data? And this time I don't want to use here a TensorFlow model, where I of course would use Python, but maybe I'm Java developer and I want to use Java. Well, I just go here and click on a plus, add from template, and I'm going to go over the Python and go to Java template and select the Kafka stream template. And here, uh, this is a template completely pre-configured to work with my broker, with my uh, copy environment, but also to expose the metrics in the right way so the collector can collect it, etc. So let's call this a counter. So this service is going to have one purpose for now, and it's just going to count number of messages coming from the phone per second. <clears throat> Great. So before we go, we have to tell it to what output we want to produce that messages. So let's go here and let's create a new topic and let's call it count dash one second. Um, Maybe let's just count, yeah. Good, um, and let's save it. And let's call this just Encounter uh, Clubhouse, this application. So here in the rest of the code, it's just a box standard Kafka stream code. So we have a tumbling window uh, example, and then we have a, um, map of key values, tuples, where I'm just converting it to give me a JSON with a window start, window eight, a number of messages in a second. So I'm gonna save this change into this structure. So this is a Java project, all pre-configured. And first thing, I'm gonna deploy the latest version of my branch. I could keep this as it is. I will give it one CPU and I will expose port 80, where my JMX being, my permit is being exposed, and let's call this a counter, this application. Now I can also public, publicly expose this if I have a Prometheus collector outside of Quicks, but because I have the collector inside environment, I can keep the network communication not exposed, just happening in my environment. <clears throat> Great. So now what we see is that this service is being built into Docker image and being deployed as a container. Here we, we can observe the build logs and later the actual logs in runtime. So while this is happening, I can go here to Prometheus Collector and just register this new service to be collected. That's as simple as going here and right here a counter. Now, of course, if you have more services, you just add more, more targets here. All right, so I'm gonna deploy this change and 
wait for this service to start. Now you can see that this service is getting input data. So when it kicks in, it will start processing this, um, this topic. Now, while we're waiting, I can also go to the actual Confluent Cloud and just go to Topics. So you see that Quicks already created like eight or nine topics there and managing all of that for me. We should know okay. as well that this only works for Confluent Cloud at the moment, the Kafka Stream support, right? Uh, it works with every, uh, every broker that you select uh, in, um, in, in, in that settings, um, except the multi-tenant broker. So we're still working on support for a multi-tenant broker. Amazing. So now it's running. And here you see that count output topic already getting data. I can check what it's doing. So this is input and this is output. So now, we're getting four messages per second, which is about right. Great, so this is working the service, but let's see what is the performance of that. So here we have the Prometheus collector and we have also Grafana. And this template not just include Grafana Prometheus, it also includes some templates for dashboards. So we can um, already get a view of these metrics. So let me just say the admin and the password. And here I have Kafka Stream dashboard and you can already see that we already processed 1,500 records and we done two commits of input consumer group, now already three commits. And you can ob uh, observe how long it on average takes to commit the offset and uh, what is the latency and what is the uptime of this service. So uh, now you just can add more and more services and add more and more targets for your collector. And you don't have to now deal with the fact that this dashboard has to have a data source. That data source has to go to the Prometheus database. You need a token to authenticate all of that. You need to also set up the Docker um, file in this Kafka stream application to expose the Prometheus metrics. There's a lot of things that you just have to take care, a legwork, uh, if you like, which um, here is done for you. So hope you like it. And if you want to give it a try, uh, it will be definitely in the description for, for, this, for this event, but it is the IoT phone demo case stream template publicly available on a GitHub.